shit. Here we go again. Warding. Um. Ah, I don't know how I feel about this skill, man. You know, like at first it was cool, it, you know, but they just added so much. I mean, let's just scroll real quick. This is all this is all here before this was here before that was there before, you know, but then we're only halfway through the blog and now we got all of this shit. So much to go through. Um, I don't really know what to say. Um, they, they went the wrong direction, I think. There's all this stuff too. We got to go through. Let's just get going. Uh, so they want to add a new skill. And by they, I mean Jagex. Uh, they, they want to add warding. This is a skill where you basically, it's like crafting and smithing, but instead of range and melee armor, you're creating magic armor. Um, and it's just the way to fill in the, the gap of how magic armor is created. And just with it, there comes so much stuff. There's just so much. I, I don't like it. I, I actually don't. I, I did. I was hopeful. This is not what I was expecting. So what they said is after the survey of 5,000 people, it was described as a gap in content, but we want more useful rewards and milestones and not just new armor. That's true to an extent. Uh, those who wanted the ability to imbue rings, moved to warding, wanted it to be fleshed out as a staple of the skill. No, there was a mixed reception to the plans for imbues in general. So yeah, they want to look at changing how imbues work with the skill. That was already known. A lot of support for concept of dissolving, in particular the positive impact an item sync could have on the economy. Um, that's I think that comes down to invention on RS3. People see that as a positive so they could see old school's thing as a positive. Uh, some of the terminology, I didn't really, this didn't confuse me. The terminology didn't confuse me at all, but they changed some of the words and all that. Being able to train the skill at fixed locations was limiting and it felt too much like runecrafting. This is true. Um, it felt kind of like runecrafting altars, but for a different skill or kind of like divination on runescape three. I'm sorry to make the runescape three references, but it's there. It's definitely there. There's definitely some inspiration from, uh, runescape three. Let me just draw my redwood logs real quick. There we go. All right. What we changed, uh, existing underused armors will undergo a noticeable rebalancing. This kind of scares me because the only one I could think of is, um, slip bark. Like what other armor is not that not used much. Uh, but that's, they're going to change them, I guess. That's that's a thing. A detailed breakdown of how to, tra how to train the skill and what you can expect to gain from it. This already existed, so I don't know if this was changed, but maybe just more made more clear. Uh, farming and hunter skills to interact with warding with expansions for both. Farming has had so many expansions over the past little bit, and hunter has had birdhouses, but I guess other than that, we haven't really had much for hunter. Um, we have the aerial fishing, which trains hunter. And then the last thing before that, I guess, was imp changes and then black chins. Like, there wasn't actually too much change to Hunter, so this could be interesting. Uh, although, personally, I, I actually don't want the skill right now. But that's just my personal opinion. It could change. You could change it. If you have a different opinion, let me know. Uh, but that's I don't actually want the skill. Uh, it'll be possible for a, to ward and train the skill anywhere. That makes sense. Crafting and smithing are like that. Well, smithing actually, you have to go to anvils. So smithing is a, actually a pretty limited skill. You could superheat. Technically, you could superheat anywhere. Um, but smithing, if you want to do normal smithing, you either have to go to an anvil or blast furnace. So when you think about it, that's actually, I don't know. I guess that's okay. It's fine. It's, it's okay. Crafting is like that at any bank you could train or if you have the supplies on you, I guess you could train anywhere. So why not? Uh, a to Z list for warding. We'll go through that. I guess we'll go through that now. Uh, a braxes. So they're, they're okay. They. <laughs> this is the weirdest part to me. Uh, terminology was considered confusing and unnecessarily complicated, right? But they add all these extra words that weren't there before, like abraxes, an item used to create catalytic or like catalytic ward stones. Uh, it is received from a monster drop. So you kill things to get these. Bane, a magic weapon that's stronger against a specific type of enemy. So, for example, a wolf bane dagger. 
Uh, battle mage robes. Robes or armor created by a warding that have a specific unique buff. There's a few of those now. Or the or never mind, it's not there's a few different armors. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's more than one battle mage armor, but yeah. Battle ward. This thing, I hate this thing. Uh one of two categories of wards. Battle wards are used in combat and provide a variety of magical buffs to an effect or, or an effects to an area. There are five types, each requiring different levels. Mind, chaos, death, blood, and wrath. These are dumb. Sorry. They just they just are. Channeling, the process of creating magical equipment. Makes sense. That was already there. Channeling lamp is the tool used in conjunction with the ward that allows you to channel. It's equipped in the offhand slot, so your shield slot. Dissolving, the process of breaking down various pieces of equipment to gather more vis. Oh, what's vis, you say? Vis is the word they decided to change um, from runic energy. I guess that's because they didn't want it to sound like it was runecrafting, so they changed it to vis. Vis is, they added another word, even though I said they're making it less complicated. I, I don't know. Just the, just my thoughts. Um, ward is a magical circle uh, depicting a specific rune. Kind of like, okay, yeah, never mind. Uh, onto the floor using a ward stone. So that's that was the little circle thing that we saw in this picture. This is a ward right here. And you use it to train warding or whatever it's called. Um, warder's kit, a satchel used for storing ward stones. So that's that. Uh, the process of drawing a ward is warding. It's also the name of the skill. Wardstone is a chalky material mixed with vis used to draw wards. What is it called again? Wardstone. So you use wardstone. Or I thought it was soapstones. They changed soapstones to wardstones. I didn't even pay attention to that. That's, yeah. Okay. So they changed. I thought it was soapstones. But they changed it to wardstones. Okay. Um, anyways, there's two types of wardstones. Elemental and catalytic. Both types are created by the player via a channeling lamp. Wardstones can be stored within a warder's kit to save bank space. Elemental wardstones are a mixture of elemental vis and steatite and are used to draw elemental wards onto the ground. Steatite can be purchased from rude shops or can be mined with 15 mining. Once an elemental ward has been drawn, it can be used as a surface for warding. So you have to draw it before you can actually train the skill. Uh, that's just you have to draw the wards. Catalytic wardstones are a mixture of catalytic vis and abraxes are used to draw battle wards onto the ground. So this is what you use when you're in combat. I don't really know how I feel about it. Kind of, I don't know, man. A lot of this stuff's just disappointing to me. Channeling lamps, we already know about these. Um, but if you don't know about it, use it to channel vis through a ward into raw materials to create magically imbued equipment. So basically you have to have a lamp kind of like this guy does in this picture and you just do a little do a little dance over it and now you're training warding uh it must be equipped if you want to use it and the basic resources needed for warding are vis and fabric so this is the runic energy we already know about that uh and it's generated by a channeling lamp when runes are consumed or when equipment is dissolved so this is basically a very important thing for warding Although I, man, I like I keep saying I'm just disappointed. This is, oh, it really am. I don't know why they did this. It makes me so upset. I, I don't want this. There's so much game changing stuff in this. It's a whole skill. Like, oh, it changes the game. Anyways, fabric, the material uh, primarily used in warding to craft magic armors. So this is what you use when you actually want to make the armor. Um, it uses existing cloth types, but will also be introducing some new ones, new fabrics, which you get from farming, planting flax, interacting with the mag magnanary. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Lower level fabrics will also be available from monster drops. So you can kill things, and now they're going to drop fabrics, lower level ones. Uh, so you have to create a ward, and or you can find one from people. Um, you can also ward at the monoliths, which are the things that are kind of like the altars. Uh, they have permanent wards around them and you can train there. So if you don't want to make one at the bank, you can just run to it or teleport to it, whatever the options are going to be. Uh, channeling equipment. So you dissolve something into the ward and then you have a chance at getting some supplies back and you will always, always get the vis. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep forgetting the name of that. You always get the vis back. So that's, 
when you're when you want to dissolve stuff into it. That's a way to get XP. You could do that, I guess. Um, channeling is going to be the best method for training, but other actions in the skill also earn a token amount of XP. So basically, this will probably be something that Iron Man will do so they can use their resources properly to get the most XP out of all their resources, I would think. Or rich players, if it somehow actually does give more XP, even though they're saying it won't, if it passes. Okay. Players from free-to-play worlds will have a few options when it comes to magic armor. Oh, have a few options. Sorry. Uh, wizard robes, which is the best and first set. Warding will allow us to add some diversity and rebalancing the following magic robes. So wizard robes. Currently, the skirt is not classified as a wizard robe, but rather a blue or black skirt. They'll be renamed to blue and black wizard skirt with plus two magic bonus. It'll also affect the trimmed and gold variants. So that's something. I guess. Um, shade robes. Shades can be found at the Stronghold Security. They were placed there uh, when aggressive random events were removed from the game. The experience from fighting a shade is drastically reduced. The player will get 1 XP for 10 damage dealt. Uh, it makes it unappealing to kill them, basically. And so they're going to be adding the Shade Hood. And they have the same XP um, from fighting them. They'll also have their XP increased when you fight them so that you want to fight them. And uh, yeah, so that's, they're, they're going to be changing that, I guess. And they'll be adding some magic attack to the hood. And they'll be changing the body and legs. So you can get a total of plus 15 magic bonus with a full set of shade. Ah, I forgot about Skeletal. That was one of the armors they were talking about. Lunar doesn't really make sense because it's untradeable anyways. It's a quest armor. But they want to change Split Bark. Obviously, they're making it a little bit better. So they're making it plus 17 magic more than it currently is. Uh, but I don't really know why. We don't we don't need this. But they're going to... I guess they're doing that. All right. Then we have Skeletal, which is going from uh, 16 to 45, which is a plus 29, as well as giving a 1% damage boost against... Uh, Dagonauts, Waterfins, and other aquatic enemies. That's, uh, so I guess it's like a budget Ancestral against certain things. Maybe you'll take it to Rex if you don't own Ancestral, although I don't think people take Ancestral to DKs anyways, so, and I don't think people barrage Dagonauts unless they're lower levels, in which case they wouldn't have the defense for this. So, I'm trying to figure out where this would be useful. Maybe they're making Water Fiends good to kill again for some resource. I don't know. Maybe they have plans. Maybe maybe it's just a thing that they're doing. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Lunars is getting basically doubled from plus 26 to plus 53, which is a plus 27 increase. It's actually more than doubled. Um, I don't I don't really know why they're doing this. It's a quest armor. It's it's but they don't want to make magic armors better and more worth using at every single tier, I guess. Uh, but they want to rename it to Ceremonial Armor, create a new armor set, Lunar Armor, with the buff Lunar stats with the image above. So they're basically changing the quest. Um, so you can wear Lunar Armor when you do the quest. You can ward Ceremonial Armor, which turns into Lunar Armor. Oh, wait, no, cere sorry, I got that backwards. Ceremonial will be one during the quest. After the quest, you can ward it into Lunar Armor, which would make it better. So during the quest, it's still plus 26. After the quest, if you choose to ward it, it's plus 53. But it's like, why? You know, I, 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 I don't know. That's they want to do it. So that's that's that. It's there. I'm just sharing the information. Imbues. Often players commute, uh, comment on how the rewards with the Nightmare Zone don't match the content it's attached to. With the update, they're changing imbues to be with warding. Uh, so you convert all the imbues into unimbued and a new item. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, allow the new item you purchase from Z with points for a set amount of weeks. So basically, if you choose to get your, your, your points back, you can. If not, you lose them. And they're also going to rework the NMZ shop, which is interesting because that shop hasn't changed in a long time. And uh, we still haven't had the mini game shop. I, like, I don't know where those those are at, but they want to just add a new skill. 
uh, a grace period to get the required level. Otherwise, the rings will unmake themselves. I don't know what that means by unmake themselves. They already are, right? They're going to be unimbued in an item. I don't know. Add the new item onto a new drop table or reward shop. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really get what that is, but it's like a token to get your points back. Anyways, that it's confusing. I'm confused on this. I, like, yeah, I get it. They want to unimbue rings, but this item and I, I don't, I don't get it myself. Um, free to play new rewards are going to be elemental robes, uh, which would be interesting. It's those those things you kill south of Fally. Um, so they're going to be degradable battle mage robes, air, water, earth, and fire. The set includes a mask. And a robe top and bottom. The mask will require a new unique drop from the elemental giant bosses, Obor, Byrophyta, and maybe some other ones. While the robe top and bottoms will require a matching elemental talisman. So, for example, if you want to make air robes, you have to have an air talisman and wizard robes, I think. Um, that I I think I don't, or maybe you'll need to have some. I, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. But free to play is getting some new armors. People in free-to-play probably happy about that. The ones that do PvP content. The ones that don't probably don't care much. But it is what it is. Actually, maybe they do because they want to train. I'm not too sure. Uh, this, if you want to read it, you can read the dev blog. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. But they're adding in a ton of stuff. Um, Arceus will have 100% require 100% Arceus favor. Um, they're a higher level shade robe. Blood Bark will be a higher level Split Bark. It also soaks melee damage by 50%. Um, at that, that's a chance to do it. Not always, but it can soak melee damage potentially. Uh, Soul Bark will be another uh, Split Bark. So basically Split Bark into Blood Bark. Blood Bark into Soul Bark. Um, and it also scales how close you are to your opponent. So the closer you are, the more damage you do. So Far Casting is less useful. Uh, Cosmos is... An upgraded Lunar, and Lunar is an upgraded Ceremonial, and it does more increased damage to aquatic enemies, so Dagonauts, Water Fiends, etc. Um, Dagon High Robes. These are actually cool. I like Dagon High Robes. Degradable Robes have an increased damage against undead enemies such as Skeletons, Ghosts, and Zombies. Um, pretty OC Dagon High looked cool, so having those back would be cool, although I don't really... Again, if the skill doesn't pass, I think it's still be cool to see these come in the game, maybe, uh, somehow. Uh, Kid Hunter, Degradable Armor. Uh, that's does more damage against dragons, similar to how the Dragon Hunter Crossbow and Lance will do it. I don't really know how I feel about that. It's going to be a whole 15%. That's kind of a lot. Although I guess Ancestral currently would be 6%, so it's only a 9%. Eh, meh, eh I don't know. Not that big of a deal, but magic against dragons, cool. Uh, Venomous, have an improved chance of uh, or improved damage against poisonous enemies such as lizardmen, spiders, and snakes. Probably won't be useful at lizardmen considering that you want to wear the Shazian armor to not take damage unless you could add this into there. Um, but 9% increase against spiders and snakes as well. And then we're getting these new weapons. There's See, there's still so much to go through, man. So much. Okay, new weapons. These are going to be uh, mostly against demons, I think. Yeah, this is... Yeah, so... Uh, the following proposed weapons will offer more varieties uh, for combat styles that utilize warding to create it, I guess. They're just making warding more useful by adding a lot of stuff. Uh, Mystic Cocktails. New range items are an alternative to Chinchampas. So you basically throw potions at people, kind of like the potion from Legends Quest. So I guess it's like a wheelable potion. Have a um, damage boost against demons and require the completion of Legends Quest to create. That's good that it it's quest locked. Um, especially since it's it's similar in the way that you know you wear it just like you wear legends wear the one in legends um, if used against non-demonic mobs it has a considerably reduced accuracy to avoid stepping on chop of viability so that's pretty good actually um, there's different ones Guam, Hairlander, Quarm, and Dwarfweed so obviously it gets better and better and better kind of like gray, red, and black chins um, so the higher tier the better the damage um, or I guess I don't know exactly. The DPS? Yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, demon bane, bane Claws. There's four types of Bane Claws that are made by channeling specific items. So they'll also have higher tiers. Um, they come in Fiend, Demonic, Shadow, and Dark Claws. 
which kind of reminds me of Scatizo, the Dark Claw. But yeah, there'll be, I guess, a new uh, way to fight demons as well. It's uh, it's so it just there's not that much in terms of stats and stuff. It's it's hard to really know if this is good or bad. Skull Scepter imbues an imbued Skull Scepter can auto cast Crumble Undead. Um, it's I'm not really sure what the use of that would be. Maybe if it's free to play, it'd be good. But yeah, so it's good against undead things. And they come in chaotic, deadly, bloody, and wrathful. So they get better, higher tiers as well. Each of these basically is just a tiered uh, weapon or weapon type that comes from warding. Yeah. Anyways, uh, they're adding the new imbues. We talked about the imbues for combat already. Uh, but they want to add some skilling ones. So for example, when wielding a ring of wood, when the tree falls down, there's a chance the tree will come back instantly. Uh, there's going to be four different ones, earth, wood, amber, and iron. So that'll be somewhat interesting to see how that works. They haven't really given info on the other three, so I don't know how I feel about it yet. Can't really give an opinion. So, yeah, that's, again, there's so there's so much inconsistency in this dev blog. It, I know that there's a lot, and it's already a huge dev blog, but it still feels like there's stuff missing in terms of the information that they want to share with us. They spend all this time showing these armors, but they can't even tell us what a ring of amber would do. And so they're just saying we could do something like this. But we want to talk about it later, I guess, because it's just an idea. This right here, though, this is probably probably my least favorite part. So this has other content. I hope that if they just want to pull warding from here and up, they do that. And they just kind of leave the rest of it because this is just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. And I don't want this. Um, area buffs from Battle Wards. So this, just read these. Pulls an enemy towards it. Aggro's nearby mods. AoE damage when mobs die. Uh, chance to heal when casting magic. Chance to restore prayer when casting magic. Recoils small amounts of damage for magic. All of this is just a huge buff to the current Mage Slayer meta. It's And you just have to stand one square away. But if you're a regular account, you already have an account luring stuff to you. So it's you're always going to be one square away from the ward you build. It's if, you only, if it only lasts for a minute, it's not worth using. If it lasts longer than a couple minutes, then it's extremely overpowered. It, no, I don't want this at all. I'm, I'm completely against this. I don't know who thought this would be a good idea to put on a dev blog. Um, it screams RS3. I'm not a fan. Um, Conjuring. This one, I don't know how I feel about it. Once you place your uh, Catalytic Wardstone, um, it'll conjure a specific mob. Uh, and it rewards you with some prey XP. I, I don't know if this is supposed to be it conjures a mob that helps you fight. Because it says help the player. So is that summoning? Or is it like um, the Arceus spellbook where you can kill it and get prey XP? Um, I... I I, I don't want this either way. Um, I don't care about the prey XP. Like, that doesn't bother me. But we already have that from um, Arceus Spellbook or Arceus Spellbook. And if this, if this is just summoning, this just seems like it's summoning. You conjure a greater imp or a greater zombie with a mind ward. You just need bones or imp impish ash. So they're adding some new ashes. I But, like, why? This is They're adding basically summoning, but in a weird way. I feel like we, I'd rather just have summoning, you know? I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. Uh, farming. They want to add uh, some new stuff which you can grow, which will give you higher tiers uh, of the resource you need for warding. So there's silk gathering um, and use flax patches, similar to an allotment patch, uh, but it depends on your farming level and warding level, what your yield will be. Uh, so you can get... Magic silkworms, dark, all the way up to moonfly and sanguinesti silkworms. And it's just, you're just basically, you can farm some of the resources you need for warding. Not too much to say there. Uh, Hunter, you can catch some moths now, which will give you silk as a reward. So kind of like implings, you'll be able to catch these. Uh, no say on the reward, but like, like the amount you get. But you can wield a channel lamp and... Uh, causes moss to follow you and then you'll get the reward eventually 
I, I guess. I don't know. That's I'm not a fan of any of this stuff, really, personally, but gotta talk about it. Uh below you'll find a mock-up of the skill guide as you'd find it in game. So kind of just showing you the robes you can make, and then it's kind of showing you the battle robes you can make. And then it shows you the banes you can make. And then it shows you the rings you can imbue. Honestly, it looks pretty cool, like this part, but a lot of this stuff I'm not just not a fan of at all. Um, and that's about it. So there's some pictures which we can go through real quick. A lot of these you saw already if you saw the first warning dev blog uh, or video I made on it. But this will be right by the farming patches. See, this is where you'd farm the silk uh, or the flax, or which would get you the silk. Um, right back here, you'd pick it. So this is one of the armors they've suggested. Um, this is the Dagon High set from pre EOC. This is the Soul, Blood, and, or, or Split, Blood, and Soul Bark. And that's about it. Those are the wards. If you uh, want to give your opinion below on warding, go for it. I'd like to read some of them. I'd like to have a, a change of heart in my opinion of the skill, but currently they just went a direction I don't like. Um, some of this stuff, like if it was just up to this stuff, like I said, like, like right here, if it stopped right here, I'd maybe be okay with it. But man, this stuff, this turns me off. This just changes a lot. It's summoning. It's, um, what's it called? I forgot the name of the, like the extra slot, the 12th slot they have. Auras. It's it's a lot of RS3. Um, the farming and hunter, I don't mind. I don't mind too much, but this stuff, man. These battle wards. This no. Just no. No. Not a fan. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh kind of a laid back read through of it. Uh yeah. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.